What's happening, YouTube? Happy Monday to you. Joe here back in the workshop with Hershey the shop dog. <laughs> She's hanging out. She finds things that have rolled under benches or whatever and pulls them out for me to make sure I've cleaned up and right now she's found a little piece of sandpaper, a little sanding strip and she's doing the <laughs> with it. <laughs> Hope you guys had a great weekend. Hope you enjoyed my last video. Uh, that was a real treat. That was a real blessing to be able to um, witness what one friend did for another friend. I thought that was just outstanding what Fraser D uh, did for his friend uh, who, who both of them had um, adopted children from out of the country and both of them have uh, HIV or HIV positive I should say uh, now you know with drugs the the pharmaceuticals and everything the way they are today it has been amazing to see the progress that in the treatment of HIV and and uh, really, I've heard in talking to them, they've heard of the possibility there could be a cure for that uh, sometime in their children's lifetime, which would be really, really cool for them. I have a, I told them that I have a friend of mine um, from where I grew up down in Jackson, Tennessee, a good friend of mine, one of my best friends of all times. Um, who contracted HIV because he was a hemophiliac, which is a free bleeder. And uh, they had to, whenever they give uh, blood factor to them intravenously, well, back in the 80s, he got a batch of tainted blood factor. This was back before they tested. And uh, unfortunately, he contracted HIV. But he's been a miracle story. He is still going great uh, today. He is, uh, I think, what, 58, maybe? I think that's what it is. And just... Uh, absolutely doing great. He's had some other health issues that really weren't related to that, but um, uh, you know, I, I'm just I'm thrilled to see what he's. As a matter of fact, the doctors have kind of made a case study out of him to see you know what it is he's done to be able to hold off full blown AIDS, you know, and um, so and you know my my friend uh, has been able to teach me you know all the the perceptions or. You know the bad perceptions and you know the the, the old uh, rumors that you can do this and get it from them you could shake hands with them and ca you know it's just it's just totally false and uh there are only a couple of ways that you could could contract that from them and 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 the general public can't do that so um i was just thrilled to be uh, be there to see uh see him open his uh his pipe from his friend from Frazier and um, that was that was just a that was a great time a great time also felt weird being the shortest guy in the group almost <laughs> that, that was weird <laughs> the, I think he put an, a picture on uh, Frazier D put a picture on Instagram of, of the group of us you have to see that I'm about you know about this much shorter than the rest of them so there are some other I would say um, uh, as uh, the Dagners put it, Sasquatches <laughs> there. So that that was great. We we closed down Uptowns last night. Oh, by the way, I'm smoking my. This is a rippled poker, right here with that rippled rustication design, smooth, concave, I guess, top, and kind of a reddish, dark red. Maybe a cherryish stem there. And let's see, my smoke of choice today is Orlick Golden Sliced. Love me some Orlick Golden Sliced. When last you saw me, I was down here in the workshop over the weekend working on uh, getting this area kind of straightened up and Try to create a hood or a barrier, if you were shield more than a hood, uh, around my lathe to keep wood chips from going everywhere. And here's something very interesting. You, you I think you can see right along here. I took what is normally a floor. I think I've got a floor vent right down here uh, that's hooked to my central dust collection system. And I took 
another one of those and put it on the bottom, turned it upside down, hooked a hose to it that I can connect with my super shop back, which is right here. This thing rolls around on wheels. This is a huge sucker. It's a six and a half horsepower, 16 gallon job here. I mean, when I keep it cleaned out, it sucks. <laughs> I mean that in a good way. And so I, I can connect and uh, disconnect it right there. So I'm interested in trying it out. I'm, I'm kind of experimenting with that. So I hooked that up. So when chips fall off, hopefully a lot of them are going there. I, I know it's not going to catch every chip, but I've got a shield over there on that side. I got a shield over here on this side, which I have my big JC on the outside of it. And uh, in the back, there's a shield. And then I created a, a little tool shelf. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, let's see, right? Where's it? It's it's up there. You can see it where I have placed my tools. And uh, well, I'll tell you what. Just come with me, shall we? You can come with me. You can come over here and take a look. I I did a little shelf here where I took my tools and uh, put them in here. Put them in. Uh, here we go. Put them in holes. You know, like that. So I've got my bits and all right there so trying to keep it as a pretty nice clean area trying my best to keep from having to uh, vacuum up all those uh, wood chips around everywhere you know it's, it's it's not sawdust itself it's the chips that fly and you know if you're if you're if you're turning wood, any of the wood turners out there or pipe makers know you got the chips that fly. It's not just that they fall. Okay. So I was trying to keep them from flying that side and flying this side and getting all over the other, the rest of the length of the, the bench and try to keep them coming out toward me. And then I've got the, the central shop back hooked up right at the main area where I'm actually working on the wood itself then everything else is going to fall and a lot of it will be hopefully captured by this and then the rest of it fall on the floor where I can just vacuum it up. I'll let you know how that works out. So i got a lot of work to do this week and uh, I hope if you're waiting on a pipe and been waiting on a pipe for a while that maybe I'm getting to yours this week and uh, we'll uh, thank you for couple of guys who did some uh, box openings on YouTube. If you want to check those out, just put in Joe Case Pipes in your search and uh, look for uh, the, the most recent date, I, I think is the way you'd kind of filter it or refine your search. And you can see a couple of uh, box openings and uh, folks on there who've who've done the uh, Rock in a Hard Place, I think, did one. Chuck Nowak, I think, did one. Uh, there have been, been some others uh, as well, and uh, quite a few, of course, who, people who don't do videos, and uh, hopefully they will uh, when they get the pipe, or maybe they've had the pipe, and you can do a video showing, uh, showing the pipe. You don't have to be in it. Just take a picture of it and hold it right here and shoot it or whatever. That would be cool. I would appreciate that. Okay, back to work for me. I uh, hope you have a great week. God bless you all, and we'll catch you next time.